In this unit, what we're going to be doing is something called close reading. So we're going to be looking at um, more complex text than we looked at last year and going a further step beyond the most important word and those strategies that we use. So wanted to show you our overall goal for this part of the reading unit. Students read closely to determine what the text says explicitly and to make logical inferences from it. You will cite specific textual evidence when writing or speaking to support your conclusions drawn from the text. That's a lot of words and basically it says that you're going to read something closely, you're going to understand what it says on the surface and underneath, and you're going to share those understandings and give us evidence of how you came to those understandings. So what I'm going to show you are the three steps to close reading. When we're reading these more complex texts, you're not going to be able to just read them one time and get it. Some of you are going to struggle with that, especially my really, really good readers. If you've always been real good at reading something and answering the questions and just getting it, you're going to struggle because now I'm asking you to go deeper and read more into things than we did before. So that's going to challenge some of you. But we're going to, again, walk through it step by step, practice, practice, practice. You're going to use this in your weekly articles that you read. And so it's going to be something practiced all year. I don't expect you to get it the first time, much like with most important word. So let's put our boards up. Okay, close reading. The first reading, the purpose of the first reading is to understand what does the text say? What are the key ideas, key ideas and details? I write so crooked, sorry. Do you understand the main idea of the text even if you don't understand every word or concept in it? That first time you read it, it's okay to not know words. It's okay to not fully get what they mean. But do you get the big idea? Do you get that main thing they wanted you to learn? That's what we'll be looking at the first time you read it. Just read it to understand it. Okay? Then you'll read a text a second time. During the second time that you read, you're going to examine it more closely. How did the text say it? How did the text get you to understand? What was the craft and the structure the author used to help you understand those concepts? You're looking at what techniques did the author use to get their ideas and feelings across? And how are these techniques meant to work? Not did they work, but how are they meant to work? Okay, so that's the second time you read something. So those are kind of the notes you'll take will be over the techniques. The third time that you read it is going to be a little more complex. And I apologize, some of this erased, but I'll read it to you. Um, the third time you read a text, I'm going to be expecting different things, and you'll be looking for different pieces of it. This will take a long time. These aren't fast reads, guys. Third time you're evaluating the quality and the value of the text. You're looking at how did the author integrate their writing knowledge and their ideas about whatever they're writing. How did the author use writing techniques that we're going to be learning in class with all the writing we do? How did they do that to teach you whatever their topic is? Did the author's use of writing techniques succeed or fail? Maybe they tried to use analogies, but they were bad analogies. Maybe they tried to um, persuade you, but their arguments weren't strong. So did their technique succeed or fail? And then, because maybe they didn't target their audience right or whatever, then you're going to compare and contrast the successes and failures of different writers techniques. So would the author have maybe done a better job if maybe they would have persuaded you if they had considered their audience better? Were they writing for an audience that was maybe already on their side? Or were they writing for an audience who needed more background and they didn't give that background? 
So you're going to compare and contrast those successes and failures of different writers' techniques. So, obviously there's more to this than what you're seeing here on the boards. But I wanted to ha give you a place to go and reference the three things you're the things you're supposed to do each time you read a text. Each text should be read at least three times, each time with a different purpose. So this video will end up being more of a reference video for you as you sit down and do these readings at home by yourself, and then you're like, oh, what was that thing I'm supposed to do? What am I supposed to do the second time? Or what am I supposed to do the third time? What am I looking for? So this is more of your reference video is introducing it, and then you can refer to it later. And as we look at each one of these, um, these reading purposes, you'll, we'll break it down, and I'll probably have videos for each one as well more in depth. So be ready. Don't be scared, though. And um, we're going to be doing a lot of reading and a lot of breaking down what we read. So eighth grade's different, like I said. All right, guys. Keep reading.